Thank you for joining us today on National Numeracy Day. In this talk, we'll be looking at a different way to think about maths learning that can help adults to feel more confident with numbers. Many adults don't like maths. It's very common to feel anxious, stressed or fearful when faced with numbers. So a key question to think about in this session is how does maths make you feel? And whatever your answer to that question, you're not alone. I've asked hundreds of adults this question and time and time again, people use words like anxious, nervous, panicked or confused to describe their feelings about maths. But don't just take that from me. Listen to a few adults responding to the question. I do feel quite worried when it comes to maths. I always struggled at school and now when I have to use maths at work, I always get a little bit anxious. So when they talk about maths, sometimes I just get nervous. Um, I think I, I know what to do, but then I don't really know what I'm doing. When I think about maths, I feel anxious, worried and embarrassed. This is because when my daughter went up to high school, she came home with the first lot of maths homework, which was exciting for her. And then when she gave it to me, I was instantly taken aback. I couldn't do it, I didn't know what it was. And I'd like to improve my confidence by having the chance to practice in my own time without any pressure so I can sort of hone my skills. Many people think that it's just them that feel this way, that struggling with maths makes them stupid or somehow inadequate. But there are actually lots of understandable reasons that people feel anxious about maths. These could include negative school experiences, poor quality teaching or support, a fear of failure or embarrassment, being told they're simply not a maths person, disengaging from maths from a very young age and focusing on the subjects that they enjoy more, or feeling under pressure. The important thing to notice is that if you feel anxious about maths for any of these reasons, they are not your own fault. And feeling this way does not mean you're bad at maths. If you do feel negatively about maths, the idea of learning might generate some questions in your mind, such as, does maths really matter? What if I'm just not a maths person? What if I find it really hard? How can I learn if I feel anxious? We'll look at each of these questions individually. Thinking about whether maths really matters. I don't want to sit and lecture you about the beauty of numbers. Some people just don't love maths, but we all do need to use it every day. Every workplace uses maths in a number of ways. Our hospitals rely on nurses doing drug calculations and interpreting patient data. Kitchens need chefs who understand quantities and timings. Designers need staff who can work with shapes and measurements. And officers need people who understand scheduling and budget management. Think about how you use maths in your work or everyday life. For example, working with budgets, timetables, measurements, data, stock, expenses or timesheets. Here is how some other people use maths every day. We use maths all the time, every day. Without you realising you're using maths. My own little challenge is my Fitbit. How many steps have I done? How many more do I need to do? To do your own finances, to work out your own budgeting. Even when you're coming home cooking the tea for the kids, you've still got to work out all the timings and that. I've been going to the gym and I've been trying to calculate how much macros, how much food I eat. Without doing the maths, you wouldn't get the right results. I really enjoy doing the homework with the kids. Weighing ingredients, calculating percentages, the time we're going to be baking stuff. To be able to have that level of baking and understanding, to me, is kind of amazing. And that's maths. That, to me, was <laughs> As well as being useful in everyday life, we can actually experience tangible benefits from improving our numeracy. These might include better money management, confidence in helping children with schoolwork, improved confidence at work, access to career progression routes, for example, apprenticeships, preparation for formal qualifications, or simply an overall boost to our self-esteem or confidence. There are lots of other examples, Everyone is different and a different value to upskilling applies to each of us. Think about what applies to you. What benefits would you like to experience? And what is your motivation to learn? Not everyone will have the passion for maths which leads to them becoming a maths professor. But that is OK. And we can all learn the skills that we need for work and everyday life. Our maths skills are not set by any kind of natural ability. There is no gene that makes some people numerate and others not numerate. 
Our abilities are not set in stone and we can all improve from where we are today, whatever our starting point. People will have reached adulthood with different skill levels, but this is usually to do with things that have happened to us rather than our natural abilities. These things are often beyond our control. For example, if you were told you were bad at maths at school or had negative experiences, you may have consciously or subconsciously avoided it, perhaps focusing on the things you were good at. This will have meant you did less practice and so it's normal that you would find it harder now. So you might be thinking that even though you've tried really hard, you still don't feel like you're good at maths. It's perfectly possible to have tried and still find it difficult. But was the support right for you? Was the learning environment right for you? It doesn't necessarily mean you're not a maths person. So what if you are trying really hard, but you're still finding it difficult? Struggling with maths is not only normal, but it's vital to learning. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay not to get it right the first time. And it's okay to find it difficult. Often, we think if we get a maths question wrong, we're just bad at maths. But in other areas of life, we recognise that we should learn from our mistakes, and maths is no different. Let's consider how we think about maths compared to other skills. With maths, we often find it easy to be hard on ourselves when we find it difficult. We can see mistakes as an indication that we're simply not good at maths. We sometimes judge our ability on the results of our secondary school final tests or we dismiss ourselves as simply not maths people. When we compare this to how we feel about learning to drive, we can see a big difference. When we take our driving lessons, we expect the first few sessions to be difficult. We know that we will not be perfect straight away. We're kind to ourselves if we fail the first time and try the test again. And most people get there in the end, even if it takes many attempts, rather than just saying, I'm not a driving person. But what if the process of learning still makes you feel anxious? Well, there are some things you can do to make learning feel more comfortable. And here are some of our tips. Talk about the way you feel about maths. It's often helpful to talk about your anxieties and speaking to a supportive colleague or friend might help. Reduce the pressure on yourself. Try to learn in your own space and time. Remember everyone's journey is unique and you can work at a pace that suits you. Set realistic goals. Be kind to yourself when setting targets. You don't need to aim to become a maths professor. Challenge your own beliefs. Ask yourself whether your thoughts about your maths ability are justified and helpful or might actually be holding you back. Try not to compare yourself to others. Learning is about improving from where you are. It's not a competition and you'll reach your own potential in your own time and use resources that suit your learning style and feel most comfortable. Everybody learns differently. If you're looking for a way to improve your confidence with numbers, but don't want to go back to a classroom, then why not try the National Numeracy Challenge? It offers a chance to learn in a way that's low pressure and confidential. After registering, you'll be asked to take a quick skills check, but there are no time limits, so you can do that at your own pace. It's not a test. Your answers help us to give you the best possible support once you've finished. All of the questions cover only the maths that you would need in work and everyday life. There'll be no algebra, trigonometry or simultaneous equations. There aren't any trick questions. They're all multiple choice and you can click I don't know if you're unsure. After taking the skills check, you'll get a range of resources at the right level to help you improve. Choose the ones that suit you best. We encourage you to log in and out as you go to break up your learning into smaller, manageable chunks. You can focus only on your weak spots when you visit the learning resources, because they are connected to the questions that you answered wrong in your check. If you're still doubting whether you could improve your numeracy, here is the story of some distribution workers in Castleford who thought exactly that, but proved themselves wrong. I wasn't good in a school environment. I found a lot of people very difficult. I left school with nothing, so it's always been a bit of a struggle for me. Yeah, like everything was like a no-go when it comes to maths. I always thought I was quite good at maths until my kids brought homework home. They would ask me stuff and I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> how, how, how does your teacher work it out? So it's good 
that I've had the opportunity now that I'm a bit older and a bit more confident to do something like this. To be honest with you, I jumped in because of myself knowing that I need the help and it was there provided for me, so why not? Why, I'd be stupid not to get the help. The website makes it so appealing and so easy to follow. It's not school rule maths. It's real life maths. It's related to you know putting shelves up or how, how long have you got for a train or paying your gas bill. It, it, it just makes it a bit more accessible, easier to understand. I'll be honest with you, it was easier than I thought it'd be, which was a surprise because it was that, uh, that person who used to bully her. That's what it felt like, but now we're friends. We had a pint in the pub and made up. Yeah, I like numbers and that now. Yeah, definitely. It's it's not as daunting to me, so I just think anybody that wants to have a go at this challenge, go, go for it. It actually has improved my confidence, not just in the maths. The more you go on that National Normacy page, the more confident you'll get, then you'll go do everything you want to do. I did it for help with my kids, and it turned out to be help for work as well. I love doing my job now. I do actually love doing the job because I'm working with numbers. I would say definitely do the numeracy challenge and use the information that's there because there's a lot of valuable information to sort of get you to the point where you need to be. And if all you've got is five minutes, then five minutes you can do. I suppose it's changed me because I know I can do things that I didn't before I didn't think I could. Basically, just do it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah, definitely. It's not just about the maths itself. It's, it's about being able to achieve something for yourself. Thank you for listening in to our talk today and helping us celebrate National Numeracy Day. If you have any questions about the session or anything related to numeracy, please do join me on Twitter for a Q&A straight after the session. Tweet your questions to at nat underscore numeracy. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.